Okay, we're here today uh, again back in Edmonton. We are with, uh, from left to right, Kate Ingle, uh, Amanda Hart Dohoon, and uh, Samantha uh, Laban. Uh, we are, these are, these are, again, uh, it's the advice for young lawyers. And in fact, as it turns out, these are all very young lawyers. Uh, these, uh, we're dealing with people that have been called for, uh, in, in most cases, I think, I think, uh, um, Amanda's been is a two-year call, and you guys were just called earlier in 2015. Is that correct? So awesome. So That's right. I want now, as it turns out, okay, uh, in in of course the proud history of Ingle Law, uh, we uh, uh, what we what you guys did was you wrote a letter uh, to editor in chief of Canadian Lawyer Magazine. Uh, and you were not, uh, you, you didn't like one of the things that they had done. And specifically, I'm looking at the, the letter here, you're talking about beauty gurus in law. Now, I, I'd be interested in knowing, um, first of all, if you could tell me, uh, if, if one of you can tell me, if uh, uh, it doesn't really matter who it is, uh, if one of you could tell me, what, what was beauty gurus in law? What, what was that, the Canadian Lawyer Magazine? I, I'm gonna link to it in the Dropbox, so, or I'm gonna Dropbox it and link it in the bottom of the YouTube video. But could you tell me um, what, what that was? And just, just explain that to me, please. Sure. Um, basically what it was is it was a, more like a public interest special video piece that Canadian Lawyer did, where they had one of their reporters live on location and reported on a an event that a, a group called I think it was Young Women in Law in Ontario was hosting and the whole point of this uh, of this event was to show young lawyers uh, not gendered at all of course um, all of the different makeup products and other beauty products so that they can present the best possible face uh, in the legal profession. All of course with the underscore that um, buying these products, primarily makeup I think, um, that it was necessary uh, for young lawyers, right. not gendered of course, right, right. Uh, to present the best possible and professional face. Right, and, and I mean you're, uh, I mean obviously I mean men don't wear makeup, right, in our culture in any event, right? I mean you're saying you're, you're they were targeting women, I'm assuming, correct? It, it was very clearly targeted at women. Okay, um, all right. They made a point of not saying that, right? but it was hosted by young women in law mm -hmm. and they panned out to the event and basically everyone there except for the young man selling the makeup right. uh, was female or appeared to be. Okay, all right. So, so again, um, your, your, um, your, the letter that you guys wrote, and again, I'll Dropbox it, uh, uh, I've already had Dropbox it, I'll put it in the, in the YouTube video there. Um, uh, what, what's the issue with that, right? You, you've got like a, a magazine um, stating, you know, really saying women, lawyer, here's a bunch of makeup for you to buy. What, what's the issue with that? Why is that a problem? Well, there's, it's an issue on a couple of levels. First, it's an issue for our profession, and it's an issue also for women in general. Um, I guess we can deal with the profession first. Uh, despite that, as I believe we pointed out the letter, approximately half of the lawyers now are female entering the profession. Despite that, there's still, an, well as evidenced by the beauty guru segment, there's still an expectation that to be successful, women lawyers must adhere by archaic expectations, that being you must be able to apply makeup in a way that's acceptable, I suppose. Um, so there's that. And secondly, on the larger scheme, it's, it's um, reinforcing that standard for women in general, I would say. Okay, all right. I think even further, and it's not necessarily that. It's pretty explicit. One woman actually says that we want to be take, se taken seriously in this profession, and basically what's being applied there, I think, is that you have to wear makeup to be successful in this profession, to appear professional, and there's a problem with that. Okay. Now, you guys all, you're all, you're all practicing lawyers, and, and I correct in thinking you all practice, you must practice just in criminal law. Is that right? I mean, or, or mainly criminal law? Is that mainly right? Mainly criminal law. Right. Mainly for, for all of you, I take it? Right. Primarily. Yeah, primarily. Not okay. So, so in your average day, um, 
uh, in your average day, you'd be, am I correct in thinking, for example, you'd be doing things like, uh, uh, w w let me ask you this then, okay, let, 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 in rather, let me, instead of leading you on it, um, what types of things, as a young lawyer, okay, as somebody that, that you know, you're, you got your law degree, now you're ready to make some money, you're ready to, to, to practice, you know, you want, you're out of law school, you gotta, you got to deal with that kind of thing. What kinds of things do make you successful? What, 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 what would help? What, what your day-to-day -day stuff? What, what is it, what is it do you think that, that you're doing day-to-day? -day? If, if not me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I mean, we, we do a wide variety of things. Speaking to clients and having a, having a good knowledge base in the law, which, I mean, is really obvious, I think, that's very helpful. Uh, an ability to write and to research, uh, particular, particularly in the area of law that we do. We do a lot of charter litigation, so research and writing is very important. Um, an ability to relate to clients, to talk to clients, and to get clients to, to trust you. Um, I think that that plays a huge part. And of course, then there's the professionalism in dealing with crown prosecutors, with judges, other lawyers, clerks. All of those skills are very, very important. Um, applying makeup, I can tell you firsthand, <laughs> not important. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's been holding me back. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, it hasn't. You're, 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 you're going after, you're going after uh, Canadian Lawyer Magazine. <laughs> you did a good job yeah, on them. Yeah. No, no, and I know, I know, I know, as a, as, I mean, like, and the reality is, I think if, if anybody, I mean, as a, as a, as a guy, right, uh, Men, myself, in any event, and, and I, I've got to assume this is a really common thing with guys, we simply don't think about makeup at all. We simply give it no thought whatsoever. Um, what, what, could you tell me um, the, the, the type of makeup in this case, okay, that, that was being advertised, this is very cheap makeup, this is makeup that a young lawyer could probably afford very easily, or this was maybe more expensive makeup, what, could you tell me about that? It appears that the makeup that was being sold was probably in a large department store. And based on the, uh, I guess you could say, guest appearance by the one male in the video, being the one selling the makeup, is very high end, very expensive makeup. And so I don't know if that would be out of reach for young lawyers. Certainly it could be out of reach for students. Yeah, and you see, that's interesting because, again, from a, coming from a guy's perspective, it occurred to me that it would be somewhat analogous that, because I. I, it would be somewhat analogous in any event to telling a young male lawyer, make sure you buy a really expensive sports car. You know, I mean, there are simply other ways to succeed in the profession, right? I, I, I'm sure, like going to the Reman Center uh, or or things like that. Um, okay, I I think I'm pretty clear on that. Was there anything else you guys uh, wanted to? I, I, I'm totally open. What, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Well, I think it's more than just the fact that what they were advertising, I think, was more expensive makeup as indicated by the salesperson. He right. was distinguishing it from cheaper makeup. I personally don't know the difference. But um, I, I think it's, it's also a, it's a financial roadblock for female lawyers generally. The expectation um, that female lawyers should be wearing makeup to make themselves more presentable. Uh, it's, it's both a time block in the sense that even if it's only 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes, you know, you're reapplying your makeup, you're concerned about what your makeup looks like. That's time that male lawyers don't have to spend or think about spending um, as an expectation to move themselves forward. And along the same vein, um, regardless of whether the makeup is expensive or cheap, it's still a price that female lawyers feel like they have to pay in some cases to make themselves look um, presentable and professional um, and that's something that male lawyers don't have to spend and also an issue that they don't have to worry about it's something where if they're choosing not to wear makeup male lawyers are they feel pretty secure in that choice I think um, uh, female I can't, lawyers can't, can't say I've ever worn in my life yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might feel a little more insecure about yes yeah, right yeah, put on the makeup yeah you feel um, yeah, that's right yeah for female lawyers I think um, in some cases anyway there's always that worry that if you're not wearing makeup, that maybe that, that is holding you back in some respect. And anyone who's worried about that, those views will be reinforced by the piece that Canadian Lawyer Magazine did. Um, I mean, they'd be reinforced by the fact that that event was held in the first place. It seemed to be held, it was held for and by young female lawyers. Um, but the fact that Canadian Lawyer Magazine, which is a uh, a fairly 
well-respected magazine to my knowledge. They, they covered it, and not in the sense of being critical of it in any, in any way, just as a, oh yes, this is a great thing that's being done. That's, that's further reinforcing those insecurities and fears for, uh, for young female lawyers. Um, and I, I think that's, that's a very negative uh, thing. Cool. Awesome. Well, that makes yeah. total sense to me. Was there anything else, uh, and again, totally open, was there anything else anybody else wanted to add it on makeup? Uh, again, uh, not, not, in, not an area I am particularly strong in, uh, so you can, is, is there anything else people wanted to add or, or, or not? Perhaps not. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much uh, for uh, the uh, women lawyers, the female lawyers at Ingle Law. And uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you very much for your help. Okay, thank awesome. you. Thank you.